All right, that was weak sauce, okay? If you want these pigs to race, you're gonna have to yell go a lot louder than that. Get serious. SCF kids and how are you guys this morning? I want to start off today by seeing your biggest smile on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, those were some pretty good smiles, but you're looking a little on the sleepy side this morning, so I want you to reach for the sky, touch your toes, wiggle your ears. Ooh, that feels pretty good actually. And last but not least, I want you to touch your nose with your tongue. <laughs> okay, that one was a bit tricky and most of you couldn't do it, but I think you're awake enough now that we can add the next piece into our story. So in today's episode, we're gonna meet a man by the name of Nehemiah. And God had a important job for Nehemiah. So let's check it out and see what that job was. Try 
try and guess what it is I'm drawing. Okay? Let's get started. Here we go with image number one. You have to guess what it is I'm drawing. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, you guys are so smart. Yes. It is. Dun, dun, dun. Sunscreen. Ah, okay. That one was a little bit easy. What about this one? I always have to be happy. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, no, not that. Um, we'll try again. Uh-huh. This, this right here. What is this? Yep. Oh, I heard it. A raincoat. Oh, let me see if I can stump you with this next one. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, no, not that. Uh, what about? Yes, oh, so you're so good at guessing. Uh, no, not a bicycle. Uh, I mean, that is a bicycle, but that's not it. What is this thing here? Yeah, there. Yes, on top of the head. <laughs> yes. Helmet. Oh, you guys are so good. What about one more? Let's do one more. Hmm. Yes. Don't shout it too loud. <laughs> no, it's not a winter mitt. <laughs> oh, you have to keep guessing. Uh huh. Uh, oh, you're getting closer. Yes, this and this go together. Uh huh. Oh, <laughs> you got it. It's an oven mitt. Well, let's do a round of applause. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so I'm not the world's greatest artist. In fact, I'm still wondering how I got a job as an art teacher. <laughs> Anywho, we had fun drawing and learning something new. Hang on. You're telling me you didn't learn anything? Huh. Well, I'm going to teach you a little bit of something now. What did all of those pictures have in common? We had sunscreen, we had a helmet, an oven mitt, and a raincoat. Hmm. Any guesses? something. The sunscreen protects us from the sun, the raincoat from the rain, the oven mitt from the hot stove, and the helmet from hurting a noggin. Oh, see, I told you you were going to learn something new. And God's people in our story today, they needed protection from something as well because the city of Jerusalem had no walls around it protecting it from enemies. It was not a good thing. So let's check out what happened to those people living in Jerusalem. God's people had lived in Babylon for 70 years. Then King Cyrus, the king of Persia, took over Babylon and let them go home. Some of God's people went to Judah, but some of them stayed. Nehemiah stayed and worked for the king of Persia. One day, some men came from Judah. Nehemiah asked, how are God's people doing in Jerusalem? The men had bad news. The people are in trouble. The walls around Jerusalem are broken down and the gates have been burned down. Nehemiah cried. Then he prayed and fasted. The king noticed Nehemiah and asked, What's wrong? Why are you sad? Nehemiah was afraid. No one was supposed to be sad around the king. Nehemiah said, 
The city where my ancestors are from is in ruins, and the gates of the city have been burned down. The king sent Nehemiah to Jerusalem. Nehemiah inspected the walls and led the people to start rebuilding the walls and gates. The workers put in doors, bolts, and bars. They cut stones and lifted them into place on the wall, and they filled in gaps and holes. All around the city, people worked side by side. Soon, the wall was half as tall as it had once been. Not everyone was happy that Jerusalem's walls were being rebuilt. Some men who lived nearby were angry. God's people kept working on the walls, but their enemies made a plan to attack them and stop their work. God's people prayed and chose men to guard the walls all day and all night. But the people were discouraged. Our enemies are everywhere, they said. Nehemiah reminded the people that God was with them. Don't be afraid, God is great and powerful, Nehemiah said. Be ready. If our enemies attack us, God will fight for us. Enemies could threaten God's people, but they could not make God's people stop building. Their enemies were not in charge of rebuilding the wall. God was. So God's people went back to work. Some stood guard with weapons and others worked on the wall. Some men worked with one hand and held a weapon in the other. They were always ready to fight just in case. Nehemiah was a wise and good leader for God's people while they worked. In just 52 days, the wall was complete. The gates were repaired and the wall was restored. When all of Jerusalem's enemies heard that the wall had been rebuilt, they were afraid because they knew God was with his people. Nehemiah led the people to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem to protect them from their enemies. Jesus came to protect us from our greatest enemy, sin and death. He died on the cross and rose from the dead to rescue everyone who trusts in him. Have you ever watched your friend go through something really difficult and not know how to help? That's similar to how Nehemiah felt when he heard that God's people were in danger. The king was kind to Nehemiah though, and he let him go on his way to help rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. It wasn't easy though, was it? They had opposition along the way, but God's people knew that they needed to trust in God and that he would keep them safe, that he would protect them. And when God asks us to do something, he's not gonna guarantee us that it's going to be easy. In fact, sometimes people aren't going to agree with us, but we need to trust God and we need to obey him. And his promise to us is that he will protect us. So can you think of a time in the past where God has protected you? Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Oliver from Johnson City, Tennessee asks, Does God protect us today? Oliver, yes, he does. Uh, God protects us, but you know, we're gonna have to unpack what it means that he protects us in a second. You know, we see in today's Bible story, the story of Nehemiah, how God led his people back to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the city walls in, in an amazingly quick period of time, by the way. Why this was significant was this. First of all, it's God making good on his promise to get his people back into the land, but also the city walls were for protection. Uh, this was the way that God's people would be safe from enemies, and also it was a way to show the people around Israel that God was with his people. He was not leaving them vulnerable and exposed. And so that's what the city walls represented, protection from harm. So God protected his people then, he protects us today. Now, what does that mean? That does not mean that nothing bad will happen, that nothing difficult will happen, that you will never get hurt. Sometimes God even brings pain into our lives. He brings hurt into our lives because it's the greatest good for us. You know, discipline hurts, 
But God is a loving Father who disciplines us so that we can follow Him better, we can obey Him better. It's actually for our good that we're disciplined. So there's just one case where if we think of protection as being, you know, never experiencing pain, never experiencing difficulty, no, that's not the case. Think of Jesus. Jesus suffered, didn't he? He died. That was all part of God's good plan. So why do we think that God will shield us from all pain when he didn't even shield his son from all pain? But here's what protection means. It means ultimately God protects us from the ultimate consequences of our sin, separation from him, and spiritual death. And it also means that at times he will protect us on earth from things that are painful. That he'll protect us at times from things that would bring us harm. But we, again, we just can't count on that being every single time. So here's a question back for you to think about. Can you think of a time when God protected you in the past? Okay, so we talked a lot today about how the city of Jerusalem didn't have walls around it to protect it from its enemies. And your memory verse today doesn't have any walls around it to protect it from me. So I'm gonna throw this ball towards the verse two times each round, okay? Whatever words I knock over are gonna come out of the verse and you get to read it with those words missing, okay? I'll help you out because this verse we have got a little more practicing to do with, okay? So round one. Ooh, that wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so we're gonna take out and steadfast and make as well as his eternal, okay? So all those words are coming out of the verse and let's read it together. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast. 1 Peter 5.10. Okay, round two. All right, this unprotected memory verse is being attacked by Jenna. All right, we're gonna take out the God of all grace in Christ, okay? Let's try it again with all of those words missing on the count of three. One, two, Three, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. First Peter 5.10. Okay, round three. Destruction of Jenna. Whoa, just a miss. All right, nothing on that one. All right, let's see what else I can get. Oh, that one made up for the last one. So let's take out while, have suffered, whoops, firm, and glory. Okay, one last time, let's read it together. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. 1 Peter 5.10. Okay, it looks like our unprotected memory verse has suffered a little bit of damage, so it probably could use a wall built around it, but that's for another day. Right now, I want you to grab your Bibles, meet me back here, and we're going to open them up to Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. Bye.
catch where I said to open your Bibles to? Yeah, we're going to open up to Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. And once you've found it, we'll read it all together. It says, Lord, you are my God. I will honor you and praise your name. You have done amazing things. You have faithfully carried out the plans you made long ago. The walls around Jerusalem were literally crumbling around them. But God had a plan and God used Nehemiah to restore the walls and keep them safe. And God has plans for you and me too. And we might not always see them up front, but just like this verse says, we can praise him because his plans are always good. Let's get up on our feet and let's worship him together now. the 
What do you say? Do you think we should wrap up our episode today with a game? If you want to play the game in just a few seconds, I'm going to get you to pause the video and I want you to go around the house, find a bunch of clothing supplies. So whether it's a shirt, socks, shoes, sunglasses, a hat, whatever you can find, I need you to grab a few of those items, meet me back here and I'll explain the game. Okay, we've got all of our stuff. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to throw some music on and we're going to go as fast as we can trying to get all of these clothing items on. There's a catch though. You can only use one of your hands. Yep, you got to choose either right or left. Nah, I'm going to go with my right. What are you guys going to go with? Okay, that's your choice. I don't want any cheating, okay? Only using one hand. Ready, set, go. Okay, how'd you guys do? I did okay until I got to the rope part and yeah, my arm doesn't really go <laughs> that way. So couldn't get the other arm in, but it's really difficult to do with just one hand. Kind of like the people in Jerusalem, how they oftentimes were only using one hand because what were they doing with the other hand? Do you remember? Yeah, they had a weapon in it to protect from any enemies that might come along as they were rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. It was not an easy task for them, but God had a plan for Nehemiah. And as Nehemiah and God's people followed out God's plan, God did as he said he would. He protected them. They were God's people. So let's close off our morning with a word of prayer. God, you have a plan for us. We praise you because you are faithful and trustworthy. We confess that sometimes we trust in ourselves instead of trusting in you. Help us remember that you are good and that you are in control. In Jesus' name, amen.